Hey, I'm Keith Shannon. Today we are carpeting over marble tile, so stick around. All right, guys, here we go. Now, that is some marble. Now, these guys, uh, we do this all the time. We've got to, uh, people want to put carpet in their basement. It might have ceramic, it might have marble. So, we've got to glue down. Usually, the day before, we'll go in and we will PL that. We will use that heavy industrial PL glue. And then we'll take all the nails out of the smooth edge <clears throat> and then we will put uh, a layer of glue around there uh, and then we will stick the smooth edge to that glue you gotta pull all those nails out of there now you can get smooth edge without the nails in but right now during covid i haven't even seen it so <clears throat> we'll take all those nails out we'll keep all those nails and we'll use those nails for another day All right, so I'm just going around the perimeter, laying them out. Right, because I'm gonna cut them down to size, get them kind of exact. Now, most of the stuff comes from China, so it's never straight. Uh, it warps, right? They use cheap wood on it, so it warps. So a lot of times you have to uh, break these pieces down. You can't even use the full thing. Now, I do use a couple of stain nails between those uh, grout lines. Now, uh, if some of you are concerned, it's like, oh my goodness, what about the marble? Don't worry about the marble. Like, marble's cold. So we're going to cover this over, and we're going to get that smooth edge down. So there's the PL, Just, you know, making a mess. And then we're going to start sticking our sticks down. Now, this one I went for a full stick, and then I noticed that it was popping up, and so as I go, I'll break those, I'll cut those sticks into, let's say, three pieces. A lot of times I'll put a couple little stain nails in the in the grout lines. I don't think I'm going to show you guys that here. Uh, I was filming that day myself, so you'll just have to take my word for it. So we're maybe you know not the straightest, uh, but listen, when you're looking at ceramics, they really should have pulled those baseboards off. Then we would have laid that out. Then they would have put those baseboards on when we were finished the carpet. But I think this is just a flip. So they just wanted to cover that marble up and make it a little bit warm in the basement. So I'm just going around the perimeter showing you guys. I think this is the next day. It's dried, it's done, it's ready to go. I glued a couple of metals in, but we gotta cut those doors. So, and these got doors have been painted on for like the longest time. So I had to get the crowbar in there, give it a couple of wax and break the seal. No oil, no nothing. There she comes and out she goes all right so we'll pop that door we're gonna run through this video quick we'll do some quick time for you guys so you don't have to stick around and uh, and go through the whole thing we'll show you the important stuff how to do it so that that PL works great a lot of people use contact cement you know what we like to go in the day before put it down let it dry overnight it's awesome it's cool it takes me an hour to set up and then it dries overnight I come back the next day ready to install so we're just rolling out the under pad getting it in position Robbie boy is gonna make a nice cinematic cut with a good blade put a little air under that pad and we're gonna get it lined up This is one of the first ones I've done with marble. I do ceramic all the time. Same difference. We'll do this in flip homes, but we'll do this in $2 million houses as well. Like someone who decided to ceramic their whole basement and now it's like a man cave or something and they want to warm it up in the winter. They're getting carpet. I hear carpets coming back in a big way. Let me tell you something, we're busy. We're busy.
Okay, so I thought I would show you guys cutting a door. This door has been around for a while, since the 70s. Got to put a little tape around there to watch the splintering. I've got my DeWalt favorite saw in the whole wide world, 60 volt. I love it. Now what the tape does, it, obviously it helps with the splintering. It's not the most perfect situation. We're carpet installers, not professional door cutters, but they needed the door cut. They're flipping, or at least I think they're flipping, or you know, putting it up for sale. They just wanted it done. We, we just took care of it. So the door is done. Sorry guys, I went through that pretty quick. Now Robbie is putting down the, uh, the tuck tape. Now this is the same tuck tape that we use on the, that people use on the outside of houses. The stuff is serious. It's not gonna crinkle. It's not gonna dry up. At least after, I've been using this getting close to 10 years not one complaint masking tape sure dries up shrivels crumbles we put a little bit on the outside on the smooth edge too because you got to remember that marble is slippery when we go to lay this carpet out this pad is floating now and it's going to move all over the place so we will put that tape all around the perimeter now we're going to show you guys we're just bringing in a big piece of carpet i think it was like a 28 footer and it was it's pretty serious stuff it's mohawk uh, refined interest so the carpet is by Mohawk the style of carpet that you guys are gonna see is called refined interest so if you like it you can go to your Mohawk dealer and you can find it color I think is ancient treasure so there we go we're putting a little bit more tape on because we had to roll this out by the side pull it back pull it back pull it back we're gonna fold the corners and then position it not so easy this is a big piece of carpet small room twist it now we're gonna unfold it get it into position see if we didn't have that tape in place this thing would have rocked and rolled all over the place so when you slide carpet you slide pad and that pad is floating which I like you don't want to glue pad down because if you have accidents with animals like you know pee and uh, urine and stuff you'll never get it out at least with that pad floating we can pull that out, wash the floors, get rid of the carpet, done. So I'm uh, speeding this up a little bit for you guys. And then just, you know, looking, making some adjustments, making sure that cut is going to flip through. I'm going to do my release cut and we're going to get at her. We're going to get at her. The reason why that's going up the wall so much, because over by the stairs where Rob is, that thing kicks in like two inches. So now we're just making some release cuts. I'm sure the camera angle will change. You guys are getting a long view of this. Hey, make sure you have any questions, put in the comments down below. I'll try to answer them. Anything you guys want to see on video, I'll try to answer them. Thumbs up would be great. Likes, thumbs up, comments, it's all good. Helps the channel. We'll keep uh, the videos coming and we'll try to bring you guys uh, the stuff that you want to see. I think I'm just measuring the seam there because I'm going to take that long piece, that cutout, and I'm going to use that over here on the right-hand side for the seam. I like one-piece seams. Okay, so we're cutting in front of the metal. A couple of release cuts. I didn't want to speed this up. I wanted you guys to see this. Now, whenever you do that, obviously you see, see me hacking through that. you got to watch that you know that you've been using the razor blade for a while. You don't want to cut through fast and slice the carpet underneath. I've been doing this for a few years, for a few days. Now, watch the knife trick. One, two, now, one, two. A little extra, just in case. Just a quick way, if you don't have your tape measure around, love that little trick. Now there's tons of extra, but I did that on purpose so you guys can see. Now I want to line that up on the one side. I'm just going to, actually that's the seam. I'm freehanding. Sorry. All right. Here's the stretcher that everyone loves or hates. 
this thing's awesome. That's the old one. Wait till you guys see the new one I got. So we're just stretching that. We're scoring that. We're locking it down onto the pins because there's no gap under that baseboard. So we got to cut that at a 45 degree angle, boys and girls, right? It's not going to tuck really. We're just going to get it in there. Remember, because they didn't take the baseboard off. That's not even baseboard. That is trim to go around a door. But it is what it is. Listen, guys, we run into this problem every day. We gotta come up with solutions. Very nice though, look at it. Nice and clean, nice and tight. Stretch this metal in. Hey Keith, I hope those boots are clean. Yeah, buddy. Bang that metal down. Now I set that with PL the day before. Look at this thing, this thing don't move. And the great thing about PL, it is not expensive. You know, here where I am, five bucks a tube, you wanna get the little better stuff, maybe six bucks a tube. Ooh, the creaky door. Let's get that door back on. Pop that pin in, but watch when you pop that pin, sometimes the grease pops out and goes on the, on the, the grease dust goes onto the bottom of the carpet. Ouch. All right, we're finishing up. Rob is vacuuming because that's how we like to do it. When you vacuum a job, when you're done a job, you actually get to see if you've made a mistake or not and you get to fix that before the customer calls you. Okay, we're done. Walk around. Look at this, guys. Carpet, tight, over marble, in a basement. Leave comments below, likes, all that stuff. We'll have more videos for you. And thanks for watching. I'm Keith Shannon. Peace. See ya.